Hi, I'm Isaac from SEL. In this video, I'd like to show you how to configure an Axion as a PMU or phaser measurement unit solution. The equipment I have here includes two AC analog input modules that can measure both current and voltage phasers, a 2243 power coupler, and a 2241 RTAC. For this demonstration, I'm going to configure the RTAC with a C37.118 synchrophaser server to send out several phaser quantities. So let's get started. I already have a new RTAC project open in Accelerator RTAC. The first step I will do is add in the Axion devices that we have to work with. I can do that by going to the Insert tab and going to Fieldbus I.O. to add in all my Axion devices. The first one I want to add is the power coupler. I'm going to select the first one on this list because I'm using a copper power coupler with 125 volt AC input and give the power coupler a helpful name. In this case, I will call it power coupler or PC underscore slot B because my power coupler is in slot B. Then I'll click insert. Once the power coupler is added, you will see the EtherCAT IO network automatically appear. We will configure that once we have added all the devices we need. But first, let's add our AC input modules. To add the CTPT module, I go back to my Fieldbus I.O. and click on CTPT module right here. I'm going to name it CTPT underscore slot C. Now before I add my other CTPT module, I will configure the settings on this one. That way I can easily just copy the module and all of its settings when I want to create the second one. So go to the Settings tab, and you'll notice that there's a few different categories of settings in here. The most important one here to configure is the Enable Synchrophaser Tags. I want to set this one to True by either double-clicking on it or clicking on this arrow here to make the Synchrophaser Tags available in the module. In this case, I don't want to use RMS Tags, so I'm just going to disable that one because that one's enabled by default. And I'm not going to touch any of these other settings, but make sure for your application you set the uh, ABC, CT ratios, the uh, phase rotation, all these other set settings correctly for your application. Before I move on, I'm going to save my project. So I can either do a control S, which will save it, or I can go up to this button here and click on save. The next step is to go to our analog inputs tab and enable each individual phaser that we want to work with from the module. By default, all of these are disabled. All we have to do to enable them is set them to true. You can do that by turning one to true. And then if I select it and hit control C to copy it, and then paste over the rest of my phaser modules, I can hit control V and enable every phaser quantity I have. Now my module should be ready to go. I can double check which tags I have available in the module if I go to this tags tab right here. These are the tags that will be available when I go online with the project. Okay, now we are ready to create the next module. Create another module by copying the module and pasting the copy in the project. I can do that by either right clicking on the module in the tree view and selecting copy, or I can go to the home page while this is selected and click click copy right here. Then I can click paste and this window will pop up with the screen to configure multiple copies of the module. In this case I only have one to copy so I will just give this one a better name and click paste. If I want to create more than one copy I can click on this add button down here and type in the number of additional copies I want to create. Once I do that, you'll see that the next module pops up in the tree view here. And I can verify that the settings are the same by clicking through the settings and the analog inputs. I can see that this has all the exact same settings as my module before. Now that all our devices have been added to the project, our next step is to configure our EtherCAT I.O. network. I can select on this in the project view and go to the connections tab first. I can add in all my devices into my EtherCAT network by simply right-clicking, go to Attach Devices, and I'll select All. Notice on this step, this is where the SDL 2241 RTAC shows up. I'll click Attach and verify that each of these modules is in their correct slot. Once I do that, I'll hit Control-S to save the project. 
One other setting I need to worry about for the Ethercat I.O. network is in this Settings tab, we have the ability to change the Synchrophaser messaging rate and the Synchrophaser performance class. I want to use a messaging rate of 60 messages per second, so I'm going to leave that as it is. But I'm going to change the performance class to P for protection class. I'll hit Control S and lock that setting in. Okay, so our Ethercat network is ready to go. The next thing we want to do is add a C37.118 virtual tag map that we will use to map the sinker phaser data into the C37.118 server. To create a tag list, I can go to the Insert tab and Tag Lists, and then click on C37.118 Server PMU. I'll call it Axion PMU. It will create the Axion PMU tag list in the left tree view over here. Now what I need to do is add in all my phaser quantities or map my phaser quantities into this tag list. I will start with the frequency quantities in the common tab. So the virtual tag list requires a frequency component inside of the tag list. To add in a frequency quantity, I will select one of my CTPT modules as the frequency reference. I will select on the CTPT modules in slot C and go to the analog inputs and find the frequency tag. And just for fun, I'm going to use the rate of change frequency tag as well, this Rokoff frequency. Highlight over those, hit Control C, go back to my Axion PMU tag list, and then paste those values into the tag reference column that match with the tag names, frequency and DF underscore DT. Double check that you have the correct tag references in the tag names. I hit Control S to save those in. Now let's add in our phaser quantities into the tag map. Go to the phasers tab here and click on the add button down here. Enter the number of phasers that you want to add. In this case, I have two CTPT modules with 14 phasers each. So I'm going to add 28 phasers to my tag list. And then I'll select Add. And it will pop up with 28 tags that I can use to map my CTPT module tags. Now each of these tags needs a tag reference from the CTPT module. So I will place each of the phaser quantities into my tag reference column here. I will go back to CTPT module in slot C, highlight all of my phaser names, hit Control C, and go back to my Axion tag list. I'll select on the first tag reference right here, hit Control V, and paste all those names right into my map. Next, I need to add in the phasers from my other CTPT module. So I'll do the exact same thing, go to slot D. Highlight all of my tag names from the CTPT module, go back to my tag list, and paste them into the virtual tag list. Once I do that, I'll hit Control S and save in those names. One last thing I need to set here is the phaser type. By default, all phaser types are set to voltage, but I want to make sure that my phaser types are set correctly for the currents. All names with an I in it are representative of phaser current, so I'm going to change each of those to a current. I can do that easily by using the copy and paste method. Once I have changed all the correct phaser types to match with the currents, I'm going to hit Control S once again and save it like that. Now my virtual tag list should be ready to go as it is. If I prefer, I could change the tag names or the labels or input my own tag alias names into this column here, but in this case, that is not a requirement. So feel free to modify this as you wish. So the last thing we have to do is create our C37.118 server and map our virtual tag list to it. Go once again to the Insert tab, go to Other, and select on the C37.118 protocol. When this window pops up, select the server ethernet for the connection type, and then name the server as you would like. I'm going to call it Axion PMU Server. And click Insert. Okay, now we can configure our server. In the Settings tab, you will have to configure the proper protocol and communication parameters. 
If you are only using phasor quantities from the Axion AC metering modules, like we are in this case, change the streaming mode to Axion Phaser. I'm going to leave the rest of these settings, but for your application, make sure you have the correct PDCID code, data rate, as well as transport scheme, port number, etc., so that your client can connect to the server. The last thing we have to do for configuring this server is go to the PMUs tab and add in our PMU. I can click on the Add button down here and add one PMU to the system. Then I will add the PMU reference, which is the virtual tag we just created in the previous step. And I'm going to change the phaser domain to puller because that's what I prefer for this application. You are welcome to change these parameters as you wish. Once you're done, the project should be finished and should be ready to download to the RTAC. Go to the Home tab and click on Go Online. Log in to your RTAC and push the settings to the RTAC. In this video, we learned how to configure the Axion as a C37.118 Synchrophaser Server PMU. If you'd like to learn more about the Axion, please download our instruction manual at our website, or feel free to give us a call here at Pullman, and we'd be happy to help you out. Thank you for watching.